Coors, the banquet beer. Founded by Adolf Coors in 1873, the Coors brand has been one of the biggest in stores and one of the most memorable on the racetrack. Many of you have probably seen the Silver Bullet. It's one of the most iconic paint schemes in the history of American motorsports. But although the sponsor is much more synonymous with the world of NASCAR, it has made its appearance in the world of open wheel racing too. It's been on the cars of champions, and it's produced some cool looking cars, along with some ugly ones as well. Today, I take a brief look at Coors Light's history in the world of IndyCar. The year is 1983, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson is all over the radio, and the kart series is only a few years removed from the first ever IndyCar split with USAC. In an era where cigarette sponsorships were still the cream of the crop, alcohol brands were around too, and it would be this year where the first IndyCar Silver Bullet came around. Here it is, it's a Gales Racing Coors Light car driven in 1983 by Al Unser Jr. Little Al was in his rookie season, having made a series debut the year prior at Riverside. And for his rookie IndyCar season, he drove the first ever Silver Bullet. Unser had a pretty good rookie year, and would have gotten the Rookie of the Year award if it wasn't for Teo Fabi, who had one of the best rookie seasons in IndyCar history, nearly winning the championship as a rookie. Unser finished 83 seventh in the points, second of all rookies. As for one of the most important parts of a year, the paint scheme? It's an odd one to me. It really does look like a silver bullet of the era. Rudimentary design with a hodgepodge of logos, but still a clear message. I will say the Coors logo being as small as it is doesn't strike me as a good call, but for the time, which had pretty simple paint schemes and some of the ugliest looking indie cars in the sports history, I honestly don't mind it. The Coors logo would stay on the Gales cars for the foreseeable future, with the paint scheme remaining pretty similar to the 83 car. Fast forwarding now to 1986, we have a silver bullet that looks more like a car for the Intimidator than anyone else. The driver that would be behind the wheel of that car is Pancho Carter, who drove for Gales in this black, red, and silver Coors Light car. This paint scheme is absolutely awesome. It just looks slick and mean, and I think it's awesome. The paint scheme converted to good yet mixed results on track, as in four races in 1986, Pancho finished third in Michigan and Pocono, and DNF'd in Indy and San Air. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end as the Gales Racing and Coors Light partnership ended after the 1986 season. This would be the last time any team in Carter ran the Coors Light logo until 2002, but we'll touch on that later. For the next 11 years, Coors Light wouldn't be involved in IndyCar. By the time they came back, it was during the second split, and Coors would side with the Indy Racing League. While they were away from the series, they had partnered up with Felix Abadas, which led to Robbie Gordon driving a Coors Light car at the Indy 500 in 1997. Gordon started the race in 12th, but retired after his car burst into flames. As for the paint scheme, it was an odd one. Red, blue, and silver can work great together, but the certain shade of blue they used on this car really didn't work well for me. It's certainly not bad, but it's just a tad disappointing. This was a one-off deal, but a year later, a much longer partnership came around. Two years on from a storybook win at the Indy 500, Buddy Lazier would get sponsorship from Coors Light starting at the 1998 Indy 500. The partnership with Buddy and Coors kicked off in promising fashion, with a second place finish at the 98 Indy 500. But after this, a victory eluded the Colorado driver. Victory would come in 2000, with a last to first run in Phoenix, and a win in the first ever IndyCar race at Kentucky Speedway later that year. Lazier would go on to win the Indy Racing League title in 2000, scoring his and Coors Light's only ever IndyCar championships. It was a golden era from a results perspective, but also saw the worst looking Coors Light car. The Coors logo just didn't suit the purple, white, and neon yellow colors to the 91 Hemelgarn team. However, improvements would be made. The frankly beautiful purple and silver Coors 91 is underappreciated as far as I'm concerned. Maybe I'm a bit biased since I'm recording this audio wearing a purple Hoosier tire shirt, but I still contest that this car looks fantastic. Back to the results on track, Lazier saw even more success in 2001, grabbing 4 wins in 13 races, the most from a single year in his IndyCar career, and the most of anyone that season. Despite this, Buddy wasn't able to repeat as champion, as sophomore sensation Sam Hornish Jr. took the championship with a race to spare through sheer consistency alone. Unfortunately for Buddy, these would be the last of the good days, with him never scoring another win after 2001, and only finishing in the top 10 on points one more time. Coors pumped up their promotion entering 2002, but after a year serving as a primary sponsor, Coors left the Hemelgarn team at the end of 02. Funnily enough, during 2002, they were sponsoring another driver, just on the other side of the Civil War. 
Scott Dixon. You might have heard of him before. Six championships and 52 wins with Chip Ganassi Racing are the top stats from one of the most successful partnerships in motorsports history. But while the wins on his win list came with another team. Before Dixon's tenure at Ganassi started back in 2002, he drove for PacWest Racing where he got his first ever IndyCar win at Nazareth in 2001. But by 2002, there was turbulence. The team was in a total death spiral, hemorrhaging money in early 2002. Dixon saw the writing on the wall, and left the team three races into the 2002 season. One race later, the team folded. Dixon would join Ganassi for the rest of the season, where he drove the number 44 car with sponsorship from Coors Light. What is there to say? This car is a complete work of art. It's just so simple, yet so elegant at the same time. It seems fancy almost. Definitely the best Coors Light car. Dixon had a fairly forgettable year, and followed the team to the Indy Racing League starting in 2003, when in his first year in the series, he won the championship. Unfortunately, this would be the last time Coors Light was featured prominently on a car. Their involvement in the series didn't end there, however, as Coors is currently the official beer of the NTT Data IndyCar series. Coors has had a roller coaster ride in the world of IndyCar, and I'm sure there's stuff I missed out on. But still, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.